versus can or will Gen Z come to the rescue? I want to bring in now New York Post columnist Ricky Schlott. All right, Ricky, uh, the 65 and older crowd will be 37 percent of our population come 2040. We need you guys to come to the rescue. Yeah, I don't have too much faith in us, unfortunately. <laughs> I mean, statistically speaking, the majority of young people who are childless right now, 56% say that they just simply don't want children. It's not even that there is, it's a, a factor of circumstance. And I hear frequently from my friends, they're worried about bringing kids into a dying planet and a climate catastrophe right, right, right. or the state of the world right now. And so I think it's even a little bit more ideological with young people. Today. 20 years ago. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and I I wanted to um, take a look at this conversation because it says a Gen Zer explains why her generation is screwed when it comes to sex. Now they're talking about actually childbirth rates, and we know in order for an economy to survive, in order to, for a nation to thrive, you're going to have to increase population. Having an aging population is not a good thing, but we are seeing this across the world. We're seeing this everywhere. Um, I think we're seeing the worst places that, are, that you see this in right now. South Korea has the worst birth rate in the world. Um, also Japan has a terrible birth rate. And what we're seeing is I want to see if they're going to actually call out what is actually happening. They will say it's about climate. They will say it's about this and it's about that. Are they going to actually call out that this is the result of the sexual revolution, the birth, birth control and modern feminism? All right, so for those that don't know, this is Melanie King. We'll call her the resident Manosphere Chameleon, all right? And she's doing a reaction video to a news clip talking about low global and U.S. fertility rates, right? And she said that she wants to see if the news report honestly tackles the effects that the sexual revolution and feminism has had on current birth above replacement numbers or will they go with the whole climate change world affairs and dystopian outlook like the planet is dying narrative all right and then after that she's going to give a precise breakdown of what the real problem is women going to actually call out what is actually happening they will say it's about climate they will say it's about this and it's about that are they going to actually call out that this is the result of the sexual revolution the birth birth control and modern feminism are they going to actually call out the behavior and how most women today do see sex as a way to get something from a man how they most women want the top five percent of men when you go on dating apps and out now even tinder has it that where they did a study where women want the top one percent of men in terms of looks in terms of height are they going to talk in a terms of money how women want the 666 they want a man to be over six feet tall and guys i have bad news it's no longer six feet they are really looking for six two six three and above um they're looking for the six pack and they're also looking for the guy that has six figures okay there or the, the six inches you know you can't have some small d energy they need big d energy so modern women have become prostitutes and gluttonous and greedy towards their own lust towards things that only satisfy self they don't care about children they don't care about legacy they don't care about family the modern woman today cares only about what's in it for me how am i gratified i have one life to live i want to go to dubai i want fancy vacations i want to own a home on my own i want to be independent i want to be a boss chick i don't need no man so this is what is leading to this it's not that it's not men who are changing it's not men who are doing something the vast majority of the decline that we're seeing in family and birth rates is because of the choices that women are making purposely and these choices are the result of decades of feminism being pushed into every facet of life starting with the school systems the university systems the governmental policies corporations 
And now we have social media and dating apps that makes it possible for a woman who was a four, five, six to get skeeted down into by a top ten, top nine, 10 chatter Tyrone. And when I say skeeted down, you know how they say that they're dating down. They don't want to have to date down. They want a man who can level up or level them up or all these other things. Well, for the most part, their behavior, they believe because they have a degree, because they make a certain amount of money or because they just desire a man who is that way, that anything below that is dating down. Well, they don't realize the men that they want and that the, because they hit those, because they give those men access for what's between their legs, even though they have these high standards, they're willing to sleep with any man for not even having basic conversation. They don't even have to go on a date to give away their body to a man. But yet when you ask them what they bring to the table, that's their most precious commodity, even though it has high mileage, high body count and is ran through. And it's really nothing special because every woman is given that away today. So there's nothing sacred about them or their body or what's between their legs, but they will have that top nine, 10 chat skeet down into them. There are four, five, six, and now they believe this is my level. This is what I deserve. This is the type of man who's on my, who's on my page. So any man that is on her level or a little bit above her level, she thinks she's better than, and we haven't even gone into all, I mean, th th this has, this has become untenable because of the way women are. And not only that, they demand that a man makes more, but at the same time, they cry about there's a pay gap and that women need more opportunity. Women need to be the heads, not the tails. Women need to sit in the boardroom. Women need to run companies. Women need to make more, but then they get to the top and they say, where are all the men that are above us that we still want? Well, they still want men to make more when it comes to their personal life. But overall, if it depends on their career and, and these talking points of their success. No, 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 no. All right. So, but guys, that was a long diatribe. Let's get into the rest of this. And of course, you know, I'll probably do another one uh, pretty soon. It was shit. After that, there's almost no reason to play the video. Yeah. She said it is modern day feminism, birth control, and the sexual revolution. Yeah, the empowerment of women coupled with the effeminization of the men for purposes of controlling a society. If you want to take over a society, you have to get rid of the strong alpha male. It's common sense. If you get rid of the strong alpha male, then you can control the feminine more easily. So the trick was always to act like they were empowering women by disempowering men. That was always the trick. And we fell for it. We fell for the okie do. And we fell for it. We fell for the okie do. You created this problem. She said the fall of global birth rates and families, the nuclear family unit is all on the women, not the men. She said it's the, I'm a boss bitch. I gotta get mines. I refuse to settle. You can't take me to Applebee's, Red Lobsters, or Olive Garden. She said it's the 666. You got to be six feet with a six pack making six figures. And then said, fellas, no, it's not just six feet anymore. Hold on. She said it's 6263 and above. And then she said it's high six figures now. 100K ain't enough. That's just scratching the surface. And then she said, oh, yeah, don't forget, no small D energy. Then she said women have become prostitutes and gluttonous and greedy to their own lust towards things that only satisfy themselves. Mm -mm -mm. That's Cynthia G, Crystal and Karazin, Paris Milan, and especially Miss Sprinkle Sprinkle Shira 7. That's her whole platform. This is women's vernacular here on social media. Oh, I don't mess with nothing that ain't serving me. They want you to serve. Then y'all heard that fat, black, ugly chick here on social media. I mean, grotesque looking, look like Biggie with a wig on. Talk about, I need a man that's going to paint the bells and do the dishes and cook dinner and do all the repairs and rub my feet. She get on here talking about me, 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 me. Exactly what Kevin Samuel said, right? Hence, Melanie, the Manosphere chameleon. Because she's taken talking points from the Manosphere and has adapted them for her own platform. Not knocking her, but it is what it is, right? 
Yeah, she said it's all about me, trips to Dubai, uh, fancy vacations. I'm independent. I want my own house. I'm a boss chick and I don't need no man. And said that the decline we are seeing in families and birth rate is because of the choices women are making intentionally. And then last, she said, women view sex nowadays as a weapon. It's a tool to extract resources from men, nothing else. They don't care about lineage. They don't care about legacy. They don't care about a family. They just care about getting an eight, nine or 10 Chad to skeet up in them so they can get access to his finances through child support. With no intentions of being a feminine, fit, and friendly mother or wife. It's all about your resources. And if it take two, if it take three, if it take five years to get access to it, the bitch will pull the plug just because she's bored. It's over. Professor in Japan. Now, Japan has always been ahead of us on this sort of uh, social media, internet kind of stuff, uh, and, and these improvised, uh, these, uh, these games where you take, become the person in the game. So he came up with a phrase called grass eaters. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it was the young men there rejected their parents. Their parents were proud. They would work for the same company for 50 years. They would do a yeah. two-hour commute both ways. Uh, and they were really proud of that. Instead, these kids, they slept all day. Mm -hmm. They played video games all night. They immersed themselves into this yeah. world. Their population is going to go from 120 million people to 80 million people. And about 50% of them said they have no interest in sex at all. The reason I bring that up is... And that's what most of us Gen X's and below can't stand about the baby boomers and above. They love to wax poetic about this superior morality or work ethic that they had over all other generations. That's bullshit. We didn't reject our parents' means of provision. Society changed. There's no more Ford plant to work at. The father, the mother, the son, and the daughter. There's no more industry here in America. All the manufacturing is gone, right? Everything is either outsourced or discontinued. Brands that you grew up with no longer exist. The paper plate companies, factories are gone. The light bulb companies are gone. The computer software and hardware companies are gone. The utility companies, companies that built refrigerators and toilets and sinks all that's made in china or india right the malls are shutting down right companies are going bankrupt and closing the toys r us's the sears that used to employ americans the mcdonald's and the burger kings the fast food chains they're all going automated so what rejection those jobs no longer exist so no, the lawmakers and the oligarchs abandoned the middle class and the poor for profit. And on top of that, there's no more pensions or job protection. So yeah, people are looking for new means of employment, even if that means self-employment. You wrote a pretty provocative article. It's called, When It Comes to Sex, My Generation is Screwed. They actually, it's not that they aren't interested in sex. They're, they're a, they've become asexual. They've become repressed sexually, even though they produce the, the, the love dolls and you can buy a pair of dirty draws in a vending machine there. They're very, it is a very perverse society, but it's, it's all for gratification of self. And there's a lot of studies and reasons for that. Um, we see here the, you know, they will say, oh, these young men are just staying at home. They're not achieving they're not this, that, and the other. Well, the the incentive the young men aren't incentivized they know they're not going to get a real family they know there's not going to be a traditional woman who wants to uh pair up with them and actually play her role they know that they're going to continually get rejected in the because women will have these un, un unreasonable demanding standards of men that very few men qualify for even though these women don't qualify for those men they believe that they do and until they hit the wall and that delusional bob bubble pops if it ever does there are the young women are basically just they don't there's really 
no women that are reasonable today. And a lot of the young women see their twenties now as a whole phase. They see it as, you know, they need to run the streets. They need to get it in. They need to have all these sexual experiences. And they're also looking for men to pay their bills. But a lot of young men are not getting the opportunities and it starts in the school systems and how masculinity and males are put down in the place of girls and women. M women are getting the scholarships. Women are getting the opportunities. And then we already know how hostile the universities and campuses are to young men, to conservatism, to traditionalism. They are shouted down. They are made a pariah. They are canceled for just being male, for having opinions that differ and go against what feminists want to say and believe. You're not even allowed to be a person, a whole person. Men are seen as just a tool to do things in society. And usually it's thankless. Usually they're ignored. Most men, the vast majority of men right now in the West are ignored. They're invisible. Women don't even recognize that they're alive so they don't what is the incentive again for young men to want to go out and conquer when everything's been given to women and women don't appreciate them plus they're not going to get sex young men are going sexless 30 um 33 percent of men between 18 to 30 are virgin and we're not even that doesn't even include the scores of men uh, 18 plus that are going sexless, whether they're a virgin or not. Do you think that's happening to women? Do you think that the, the, the number of, of female virgins are increasing? Lots of times when you hear women saying that they're, you know, they're not sleeping with anyone, they're not having sex. It was a personal choice, not because they're involuntary uh, incel. Well, I mean, they're, they're <laughs> involuntary celibate which is in and now that is seen as a derogatory. It used to be a time in our nation when we had morals and ethics and standards when somebody being a celibate and a young man keeping himself chaste was something that was celebrated and seen as a good, uh, he was seen as a good man. But now it's derogatory. While women, the world says that's wrong, but they women who run a body count have trains run on them, sucking D in school and everything else. That's like she's getting brownie points with this emotional circle jerk of the sisterhood that she's a hoe. They even celebrate being a hoe. They may have cakes on how many uh, deletion, baby deletions that they've had. And so when you see these things in totality, like what man in the West is going to be like, oh, I want to work hard and, and do all this just for what? To be shouted down, to be at any moment, you could be canceled. And then once you get married to one of these prize of a Western woman, what happens? She's not happy anymore or she ends up friend zoning you in marriage and you, you're in a sexless situation where you're trapped and you're in this thankless, horrible nightmare that's called marriage in the West. And then what, she's unhappy one day, then she's running off with your money, anything you've earned in your children, then you drag through hell. There's a court case I, I talked about the other day where a woman to get back at her ex-husband, or at her ex-husband, she's basically transitioned their son into a girl. Like this is the foolishness that they're dealing with. So please, are they gonna talk about those things? I doubt it. I mean, is this a similar situation? Yeah, I mean, I think that one thing that we have here that's even worse is our partisan politics situation where we know that boys are going to the right and women are going to the left. And increasingly, they're saying that they refuse to date someone on the other side of the aisle. So more than half of women say that being a conservative is a red flag. More than half say listening to Joe Rogan is a red flag. And so I think we're kind of headed towards a demographical disaster if we can't bridge the divide, at least putting politics on the back burner for romance. How do you put it on the back side? How do you put it on the side when it's everywhere? I mean, that's... Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's hard to find any part of the society, TV commercials, television yeah. shows, articles, books yeah. are being rewritten and, and re-edited in certain ways. How do you put it aside when it feels like who was ever pulling the strings actually trying to make it worse? Well, I mean, that's why I think that we're really in a tough spot, young people. I mean, I, as a libertarian young woman, I'm often told like, oh, it's a breath of fresh air because you're not going to be offended by everything that so I the, say. So you're, are you kind of in the middle? Like <laughs> you're in a lonely island almost, <laughs> aren't you? Well, yeah. I mean, I think the the out group dissenters are, are, are sort of the, the most valuable commodities. I know a lot of young men who play up their woke positions in order to get women. And um, they say that it's been pretty effective, actually. You know, there was an old saying, and I would think it was still applies that uh, when you're young and you don't have a heart, like you're not, you, it goes something to the fact that when you're young and you're not liberal, mm -hmm. uh, then you don't have a heart. Is, yeah. and when you're older and you're not conservative, you don't have a brain. Yeah. I mean, are we just, could it just be that same thing going on? Or is it something oh. deeper? 
I think that the crazier part is that we just know that young people are forking. So it's less a factor of age. We know that the boys are going right, right. and the girls are going left. Is, so that, maybe- is that because the young men are uh, have more feel hopeless? I mean, this is a society yeah. that's been trying to rewrite the fact that women make less than men. And it feels like the push has been to give, give women a push. And yeah. it's come at the expense of men. Going left. Is, so that, maybe, is that because the young men are uh, have more feel hopeless? I mean, this is a society yeah. that's been trying to rewrite the fact that women make less than men. And it feels like the push has been to give give women a push. And yeah. it's come at the expense of men or Absolutely. young men. Absolutely. A lot of young men, I think, definitely feel like the girl power stuff is disproportionate and that boys are disenfranchised in society today. I would also say that I think the left right now really panders to some more female uh, proclivities to be more empathetic and emotional and want to protect people and, and do the right thing right. and be charitable. And right. so I do think that there is almost a feminization of the left wing. As, so as I think I've- wow, they actually admitted it. They said that there seems to have been a disenfranchising of men for the empowerment of women that's overall in society so black men we are not paranoid when we sat there and said yo it seems like 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 they just empowering black women over us and, and just like shitting on us making us shit giving us no access to resources our pipeline is from school to prison their pipeline is wherever the fuck they mind can take them right she said that the left panders to female voters proclivities of being compassionate empathetic and emotional and there seems to be a sort of that's what she said there seems to be a sort of feminization of the left wing now that lines up with yesterday uh democrat james carville right he said that the Democrats are losing support amongst men due to preachy females who drive the party's culture. The message is too feminine. Does that sound familiar, fellas? Hmm? Yeah, James Carville, Skeletor, who I really agree with. said that the democrats are losing support amongst men due to preachy females who drive the party's culture the message is too feminine y'all know who he's talking about right yeah who's james carville talking about what preachy females is he talking about yeah This is exactly why black men are leaving the Democratic Party because of the disenfranchisement of men and fatherhood and masculinity. And it seems to be the empowerment of everything female, everything woman, because in the black community, if it ain't black girl magic or black girl rocks, then it's toxic masculinity, homophobia and anti-Semitism. That's all black men have to offer. We have black women politicians, professors, and TV show hosts like Tiffany Cross telling black men to get in line. Get in line with who? She said, get in line with black women. That's who James Carville's talking about. We got Stacey Abrams and Keisha Bottoms insulting black men's intelligence saying that we're being manipulated by Russian bots. That's what James Carville is talking about. You got Professor Brittany Cooper saying that black men are demons of disinformation because we won't vote for Stacey Abrams. That's what the fuck James Carville is talking about. And don't be surprised, you know, they pay people to watch social media. They have people on the payroll for that shit, as well as they watch some tidbits here and there themselves. But they got people out there making a sleeve, just like you or I do. They'll make a sleeve and and tell the politician they work for, uh, I picked out six episodes I need you to take a look at. So don't be surprised these people, to a degree, some of them are subbed to Professor Black Truth. The Black Authority, Tariq Nasheed, Torian, Afro Elite, or, or the Phil Scott Show. They are watching. 
I'm not putting black men down, but sometimes it's like, well, some of you, Kevin Samuels following Tariq Nasheed, quoting people, please look at the truth and see what's happening. Please look at the truth and see what's happening. Please look at the truth and see what's happening. They can't come talk to black men in the middle of September. Yeah. The election is November. They, I called it. They should have been doing this in January yeah. after Biden got inaugurated to build up a, a program. So when elections come, now you properly prep. Yeah. And invest in black media, brother. We know that. Black yeah. owned black media, owned not black media. targeted. Black owned media. Absolutely. Uh, Cliff, listen, I think Roland made a really uh, legitimate point here. Um, I will say, you know, a lot of black men sometimes feel like they're ignored or they're put down, particularly sometimes even by black women in the media. So this is not that. But I do hear Roland's point that I felt ignored. But you feel ignored and then you go over to the other side. The oppressed feel oppressed. So then you go and try to align with the oppressor. So I'm not putting black men down, but sometimes it's like, well, some of you Kevin Samuels following Tariq Nasheed quoting people, please look at the truth and see what's happening and get in line with some of the black women is majority, like he said, vote Democrat. But that margin of people who can be plucked away from your people and go advance policies that harm your people. I just don't understand that. It's because of a deep well of enthusiasm voting for Stacey Abrams the way that they should, because we are misinformed. We are victims of misinformation. Take a look. And I do not believe it's because of a deep well of enthusiasm for my opponent. We know that black voters are often discounted. And unfortunately, this year, black men have been a very targeted population for misinformation, not misinformation about what they want, but about why they want what they deserve. And my campaign has been the only one that has very intentionally, thoughtfully and consistently reached out. That has been misconstrued as concern. When it indeed is just respect. I'm Mayor Bottoms, I picked up on that because I'm just wondering, her, Stacey Abrams' focus on the misinformation that's being targeted at black men. And it makes me wonder, is she not getting the black support she needs in her race against Brian Kemp? Listen, Jonathan, I, I think that Stacey is spot on with that. I listen uh, as my kids watch NBA highlights and whatever else they watch on YouTube. I hear the misinformation being piped in. My 12-year-old, my 14-year-old son, my 20-year-old is getting it. So there is definitely um, a target toward African-American men. Yeah, so according to these woke Democrats, right, these liberal black women, they're saying that black men are being misinformed, okay? And they're getting misinformation from YouTube, right? Watching NBA highlights. Like, you know, if you watch anything on the NBA, you're going to get any type of propaganda, propaganda, propaganda. Only to a chosen few. Yours is a generation of scribes, highly knowledgeable people, saying to those that proclaim the faith of Jesus Christ, I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. That's a serious indictment of the church, a serious indictment of Jesus, that there are those in our community beset by the kinds of spirits that seek to destroy us. We need to think robustly just for instance about the demon of disinformation that permeates our communities and that renders some of our most vulnerable men, our most visible men, the Kanye's and Kyrie's, the Drake's, Keep Megan Pete's name out your Okay. The old people won't get it, but the young people do. The Drakes and Tory Laneses of the world, foaming at the mouth, rapidly spouting anti Semitic, anti Black, anti feminist, anti factual statements. We need to talk about the demon of disinformation that has Black male voters in Georgia willing to support Raphael Warnock, but not Stacey Abrams. Come on, disinformation. We need to think about the spirits that inhabit us that make us unwilling to speak, even as literal fires and floods threaten to engulf us, the spirits that cause us to be cowardly in the face of abdications of responsibility to black people and our well being by those with the power to change it. Yeah, so you guys see the agenda here, right? From the black liberal woman okay when you don't support democrats when you are anti-feminist okay when you stand up for yourself as a black man 
You see what they do? They try to tear you down, right? Because you don't want to vote for Stacey Abrams or you say something about one of their black queens <laughs> or you say something about one of their black queens, black queens <laughs> driven by the spirit of Jezebel, right? Like Meg Thee Stallion, Jezebel, Jezebel, right? Like Meg Thee Stallion. The young men are uh, have more feel hopeless. I mean, this, is that because the young men are uh, have more feel hopeless? I mean, is, that, is that because the young men are uh, have more feel hopeless? I mean, this is a society yeah. that's been trying to rewrite the fact that women make less than men, and it feels like the push has been to give give women a push, and yeah. it's come at the expense of men or Absolutely. young men. A lot of and it feels like the push has been to give give women a push. And yeah. it's come at the expense of men or Absolutely. young men. Absolutely. Girls are going left. Is, so that, maybe... is that because the young men are uh, f have more feel hopeless? I mean, this is a society yeah. that's been trying to rewrite the fact that women make less than men. And it feels like the push has been to give, give women a push. And yeah. it's come at the expense of men or Absolutely. young men. Absolutely. A lot of young men, I think, definitely feel like the girl power stuff is disproportionate and that boys are disenfranchised in society today. I think definitely feel like the girl power stuff is disproportionate and that boys are disenfranchised in society today. I definitely feel like the girl power stuff is disproportionate and that boys are disenfranchised in society today. I would also say that I think the left right now really panders to some more female uh, proclivities to be more empathetic and emotional and want to protect people and, and do the right thing right. and be charitable. And right. so I do think that there is almost a feminization of the left wing is so i think I've they did touch on this guy so i am very proud of this news segment of course they're not gonna go as deep as i do but they are calling those things out and actually saying what is going on of course women are going more left because they tell them what they want to hear even though it doesn't really yield results and actually hurts women for a lot of the policies and things that they have forced they have not forced, but entrenched into women's minds work, especially young women. Um, and, and, and young women live in a bubble. They live in this bubble where everybody, everything reaffirms what they believe. Everything re reaffirms that everything is given to them. So of course they're going to support those beliefs. They're going to support that party. Men have been on the other side and have always had to look at reality, the cold, harsh reality and see what is going on because no one's helping them. No one cares about men. No one cares what happens to them or tries to give them a leg up or a push up. And then outside of no help, they're also told they're bad. They're wrong. Being a man, they have to tiptoe walk on eggshells to even speak or say or do anything or they're afraid that if they do build themselves up and they say the wrong thing they're going to be canceled and you know it's so and more and more i think also the sexual liberation that i touched on again women are their sexual behavior today is disgusting and then they say don't judge uh, sex workers don't judge this who are you to judge them they're not hurting anybody this is what they don't understand this is why i require a, a minimum iq to have a discussion with somebody. This is why I can't do a lot of these panels and things because it's just, it's, just, it's I'm going to get a temper and I'm trying to keep myself more professional because they'll say, what does it matter? It's her body or choice. She could do whatever you want. You can see how it affects the entire nation. It affects the economy. It affects every facet of life. It affects that person. I'm actually, people who say, you're against women and this, that, and the other. No, I'm not against women. I'm actually trying to tell you the truth. The things that you have believed, the lies that you have been sold are hurting you. But if you want to stay blind to it, because right now it feels good. It's like eating a bunch of fried food, eating a bunch of McDonald's, eating a bunch of fast food and not watching your weight, not exercising, all that. It feels good in the moment, but there is a time where you're going to have to pay the piper. There is a time when the wall will hit. There is a time when you're going to realize you are worn out. You are tired of being, of working for this corporation, your corporate daddy, your corporate husband, where at any moment, moment they can let you go because they just are making changes. They're unsatisfied with your work, but you're tired that you have to get up and grind and grind and grind. And then you also have spent so much in, with consumerism because women spend, drive the economy in terms of consumerism. And so you've spent a lot, you haven't saved enough and you're out, like you're just looking at a life where you're staring down, where you're just, you're gonna have to keep working. Then your looks are declining. You don't, you don't have men trying to beat down your door and wanna be with you anymore. And a lot of women, a lot of 
feminism says 40 is the new 20. And listen, this is not coming from me because I'm an ageist. I'm 42. So I recognize these things. This is coming from experience. This is coming from me being able to see the view as somebody born in 1981. Okay. I've lived a life and I understand these things. And I do not get why young women think that there's no expiration date to their life. They think 40 is going to be the new 20 and men are always going to want them. There's going to be another place, another man they can monkey branch to, to take care of them. And that's just not true. There you are. And it, we're not even going to talk about the layoffs and all the other things that are going on right now in the economy. The only thing we know that have built society, the backbone of society are men and women coming together and building families and staying loyal and having that commitment to do that together. Everything outside of that is just noise. Got good news. Yeah. Y'all say what y'all want about Melanie King, man. But she has lived and learned. You know? Um, you heard what she said, right? She said that the girl power stuff is disproportionate and the boys are being disenfranchised girls empowerment is at the expense of the boys this is across the board but this is exactly what we see in the black community with all that black girl rocks black girl magic shit and the black boys we get toxic masculinity right so it's disproportionate and it's disenfranchising so um it's something that sergeant willie p said um i'm a quote right he said, in today's society, there is no incentive for men to compete. He said, the carrot is no longer there. Yeah, y'all know the carrot, the horse, right? In order to get the donkey or whatever to go forward, you dangle the carrot in front of them, right? He said that our fathers and our grandfathers, they had a carrot, right? They had the motivation to work because if they worked, they had a good job. It was enough to buy a home, enough to have two kids, two cars, go on vacations, get a pension, then retire. Now, that carrot is no longer there. Most of you won't buy a home. Most of you can't afford a car, right? Then the men see it as all their bosses or women who don't like men. Women have all the power in society. Just an accusation can ruin their life. No evidence, no proof. Just tears. In a divorce, a man can meet all the benchmarks, right? Have the home, have the salary, have the savings. He's faithful. And she can just up and get bored. And you lose your home, you lose your kids, and half your salary. So the incentive is no longer there. The carrot is no longer there. So boys don't want to compete. They'll sit in the basement and play video games. Well, I go out and try to talk to these girls and you 16, 17, 18 years old and these girls already got six, six, six standards. You got to be six feet with the six pack with the six inches. And you're like, I'm 17. I work at fucking McDonald's. I'm at the mall. So men don't want to compete. By the time these girls is 18, 19, 20 years old, they done had one date with some rich dude or some NBA player. And now her standard is that. So here it is. You're a regular working man. And she done went out with some NBA player. And this nigga spit more in a night than you make in a year. So the boys don't have no incentive. Y'all have the ballers. So this got the boys completely just... Vol selling it. Incel vol sell epidemic, right? Some of them are voluntarily celibate because they like, you know what? I'm not jumping through all them hoops just to get the little affection of some chick that's going to leave me for a nigga who's an inch taller or make a dollar more a year than me. No. Too much risk. Too much risk investing in these modern day females that can just up and leave, you know, with irreconcilable differences, meaning there's no explanation needed. Yeah, that carrot is gone and this affects the black community and the white community in different ways you know the black community we've always been poor we've always worked with less right but now you got the white community who's used to having them the white man in general who's used to having what those financial advantages and benefits of white mendom Right. For the most part, you know, the majority of all the jobs 
you know, were all white run and controlled. So a white man could always get a job with a good salary. Now he has to compete with other races who are just as smart and just as qualified as he is, as well as women. White man ain't a shoe in to get that management position no more. White woman got that. Asian woman got that. All right. Plus the industrial plants, the manufacturing jobs that white men had, they gave them the middle class salaries are gone. So you either skilled trade, medical profession, you a cop, you a fireman, you in finance, uh, security, uh, you a service worker, you got a city job, or you work for one of the utility companies. Fast food establishments and, and malls are no longer dependable sources of income. So the jobs have been cut in half. The jobs that white men had access to that kept them in the middle class and beyond, those jobs no longer exist. So without the good jobs, those financial advantages that white men used to have in the past no longer exist. They don't have that lifestyle to offer to white women. That is the carrot that the white man used to control the white woman with. He no longer has that carrot. Yeah, I got to get with a white man in order to have a home and to do this and to do that. She no longer needs that. Plus, women have more money. Women can do it on their own now. If you got a woman out here making seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000, whatever she's doing, she don't need no man necessarily to survive. And you got different lifestyles. This ain't the 40s and the 50s. You know, some women don't want children. Some women don't want families. Some women don't want husbands. Some women are living alternative lifestyles, right? Some white women are even dating other races that they didn't have access to in the past. And this definitely affects the white community because there's another aspect. White women are rejecting the white patriarchy as well as white supremacy. So the white boy used to know that, you know, Sergeant Willie P said, you know, back in the past, white boy already knew a good job was lined up for him. There was already miscegenation laws, so white women could only fuck with white men. So even if he was goofy and flat footed and overweight, it, it, you know, he'd have a good job and that would get him a pretty woman. And he could move out to Long Island and have a nice house. That doesn't exist anymore because now that white boy ain't got that job and that white woman probably make more than he does now. So white women are rejecting white men on a whole. This is why they have such bad birth above replacement numbers for several reasons. Okay, alternative lifestyles, the economy, interracial dating and marriage. And more than anything, the white woman's rejection of white supremacy. See, a man can keep up with all that fucking pitchfork and, 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 and let's go down here and burn the town shit. Women can't keep up with that shit. The women won't go home, take care of the kids. The one, women want to be at peace. The women is like, yo, why don't y'all just give them a fair shot? And the white man like, yeah, but giving them a fair shot going to take away all my advantages. And once the white woman saw that shit, the white woman started rejecting white supremacy and the white patriarchy. All right, so we got all the advantages and we living good and shit, but that's at the expense of everybody else. So even though we got the most, we probably won't keep it because now everybody want to kill us because we the only ones that got anything. Back in medieval times, what was it? They said never hoard the castle with treasure. Because eventually someone would come to what? Reclaim that treasure. So you're sitting in the kill zone. Basically the white woman has seen that you, we're in the kill zone. Like, like we done took everything from everybody. We run everything. Don't nobody else got shit. So basically everybody got their eye on us. So you don't put us in the kill zone. I want no parts of that.
Okay. An app, a new app is on the way. <laughs> Are you ready for it? I am ready for it. All right. This app starts with your, it scores your, your, your uh, here we go. This is your, your score, your dating app for people with good credit. <laughs> so at the very least, you're getting a 675 <laughs> on up. I mean, would that help? <laughs> I'm not sure about this one. I mean, I think it's an interesting conversation starter, but I think if you're filtering for particularly for, for financial reasons, I, it might be a little transactional for my taste. Really? I, I mean, yeah. isn't, it, isn't one know? of the big mistakes is people don't have honest conversations about finance or, or, yeah. or when it comes to young folks, it's still about, Before you know, the first magnetism. Date, though, yeah. I don't know if you're building your credit, if you're if, or if you've you forgot one bill, but you're you're, you're headed back on the right, right. track. I don't want to just filter. So you dem for dem that reason. Dem demographics as, as destiny. Are we right now? It feels almost like we're not going to catch up. To, I mean, will, will can is it possible to ever have another baby boom? I don't know. I mean, I do think that there's like a small subgroup right. of Gen Zers who are starting to come around and realize that like a traditional family I saw life something is the other day where women, uh, young ladies at high school, at a college graduation were all wearing engagement rings. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think there's a, a little revival of some traditional values, but yeah. I would say by and large, my generation is, is more skeptical, even if it's a financial element as well, too. I right. mean, don't underestimate how many young people are just underwater with student loans that they can't pay back to. And uh, $250,000. You can still get married. You can still have kids. $250,000 to raise the average. Average kid up to 18 today. I mean, it is crazy. So, I think that there's a whole host of reasons, and I'm not too yeah. uh, optimistic. I will tell you <laughs> is the reason I succeeded on Wall Street. I was cold calling, 100% mm -hmm. commission. I would have quit if it was not for me having a baby. Wow. So that made me successful. So, and again, a lot of the older generation does not understand the street. They, they live by a different, they live in a different age in their minds. They haven't had to deal with, 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 with the modern street today and what is going on. And there, this is, there's so many layers to this conversation that needs to be had, but this is why I do this work. It's not to dunk on women. It's not to hate on women, but I have to call out where I see the problem. For the, I, I have been doing this work for several years now across the board. Most of the experts, almost all of the experts, people who study these things, data scientists, dating scientists, sociologists agree the side is coming from women, women and their behaviors, their standards and the things that they want. It is delusional. And I don't know how we get this bubble we, to pop, but it is going to get to a place where there's going to be so many consequences. Women have to be so lonely. More men have to become passport bros and finding women out outside of the US, moving to countries and economies where they can actually afford to have a family. It's unaffordable for most men to have a family right now. And then women don't wanna work, but, and they don't wanna do a two, 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 uh, two in income household, but yet at the same time, they they demand this this lifestyle that really is unaffordable for just the average man's salary but we already know the average man is invisible to most women you see like no matter where you look it is women that are the issue do do men have issues yes but for the most part men have stayed the same and actually men have become more moral men have become more traditional men are looking for family to the point where they are so they that men want family so much they are willing to leave the country to find a wife that shows you men aren't trying to be playboys most men aren't running the street and have their pick of all these women they just want a woman who loves them that they can build with that they can be with that they can have that connection and love and family with that incentivizes a man that is at the heart of a man but for some reason at the heart of women is to be independent and it's about me 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 and what's in it for me and everything else can be damned because as long as i'm happy who cares what happens to the rest of the world i mean it's all of these factors the cost of living affects birth rates the cost of raising a child Right? You have to have disposable income to raise a child. Okay, um, You have women's economic empowerment, which affects marriage and childbirth. All right? Feminism. All right? Alternative lifestyles. All right? Men only see the disadvantages to getting married and having children. So now you got a bunch of men out here that don't want children. All right? Yeah, these are issues for all communities. But... I think that the white community has the most to lose. Why so? They're on the money. Yeah, they built this society in their image with lies and propaganda. And now in this information age, all those lies and propaganda is crumbling. All right. And then on top of that, you have white women 
having a exodus from the white male patriarchy. So this is going to lead to the rise in radicalized white men crying D-E-I-C-R-T and woke. And it's going to lead to the weaponization of a lot of white men because economic hardships turn white men into wasp. Right? So yeah, this is the creation of the incel. You know, in other words, capitalism cut off its own nose despite its own face. You remove the carrot from society to where men no longer have the desire to compete. They see only disadvantages on the very rudimentary uh, pillars of society, which is the nuclear family. Having a nuclear family, which is the p pillar of society, is no longer feasible, no longer attainable. Plus, like Melanie King and Ilyana Van Zant said recently, women are just horrible people. Yes, women, you have become horrible people. You two black women, I don't know what happened to y'all. In the 70s and the 80s, I love me some black women. But now, y'all all strong. Y'all wrong for the wrong reasons. Y'all misguided. Y'all are emotionally immature. Y'all are self-centered and y'all are toxic. And I've come to realize that any woman that's screaming toxic masculinity is trying to cover up her toxic femininity. Black men's manhood is not attained through black women's approval of what that manhood is. That's why only 24% of y'all are married. 24 out of 100. At least black men, you know, we're closer to 40 than we are 20. You know, 34, 35% of black men are married right our marriage numbers would be higher if you would cooperate but then you choose not to cooperate and then we marry out and then you scream we got self-hate and we hate black women and this massage in the wall me married to a spanish woman is massage in the wall internalized hatred for black women with power <laughs> but they get swirl and divest so black women, y'all gonna have to make that choice between degrees and trips or husbands and kids. But with the change in the society, uh and about uh three, four generations of black women drunk on empowerment, I don't see things changing anytime soon. Unless, of course, we have a civil war or a world war, right? Then women will get off that bullshit. But <laughs> until then, you know, guess we stuck with these broads. Yeah. Shout out to Melanie King. Y'all comments in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe, bunk. I'm out. Peace.